one from a light shoe we had we were forced to uh, change the schedule yes, so sir. the next part of the cancer prostate will be held on the 16th june so but now uh, um, today's session you please conduct and i welcome all my students and the respected brothers and faculty members uh, i hand it over to shobik to conduct yes, sir. Thank, you. thank you sir yes sir necessary i will participate okay sir thank you sir thank you okay sir. thank you sir thank you sir shobik i think our external yeah. faculty or rather uh, our senior faculty is dr uttam mete he is also joining is that right sir mm. Now, Uttam Mehta sir is not joining today. I have called her, called him. Okay. He is out of India. He is at Chicago for attending the conference. He will okay. not be able to join today. Okay. 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 All the students are here. Only, only Mrinal and. Okay. And others. So we yeah, can, yeah. Will, he will keep to the, keep the time. Uh, yes, sir. Discussion crosses the time limit, then he will uh, ring the bell. Sir, we have got the stipulated time of 20 minutes for each of the session, and we will uh, target to finish the presentation by 12 minutes at least, so yes. that we can get the eight minutes for our discussion. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, all That's the right. faculties have already joined. Basically, uh, Dr. Gopal sir, Himadrida, as well as uh, Konishko sir also. But uh, good, evening, only, everyone. good evening, everybody. Yeah, only good evening, uh, welcome. for the stipulated student, only Brinal has joined, Jyotin, and uh, Jyotin has also joined, and Narendra Singh, he has not joined yet. Uh, Shobik, I am calling, sir. I am calling, sir. Uh, sir, I can't hear you, sir. Uh, sir, please repeat, uh, Ranjan, sir. Wait for the everybody will join. Yes, sir. And on seven, so you can vote for three four minutes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, you are. 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 Dr. Narendra Singh Kum Kurmi, have you joined? Mrinal, hello. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Mrinal, uh, do you have the contact of uh, Narendra Singh Kurmi? Yes, sir. I, uh, uh, please call him. Please call him to join as early as possible because we are just few minutes left to uh, start our discussion. Okay. Uh, yes. Can I, with your permission, leave this meeting for a few minutes? I have some technical issues over here. Okay. I'll come back. I'll just come back in a minute. Okay. 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 Thank you. Well, thing is that the hospital. I can hear them, isn't it? Huh? You can hear them, but the thing is you can't see them. Okay. Okay, I don't need to see them. Okay. Now we're doing the data. Our video is different. Uh, hello. Hello. Okay. 
Nothing else I can, I'll be able to hear. Are you being able to hear? Hello. 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 We can hear you, Nivadji. We can hear you. Okay, okay. All right, all right, Anjita. By time, by time, you have to. I set for you're done with your presentation, then you can just take it. There's somebody else speaking. I cannot hear him. Um, hello, Mrinal. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, are we able to join with him? Yes, yes, sir. Can I share, sir, screen? You can share, but what about the Narendra Singh, Dr. Narendra sir, Singh? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have called, but uh, the phone is busy, sir. Again and again. Okay. So only we have only two presentation with us. That is that is the Dr. Mrinal and Dr. Jatin. But uh, we don't have the Dr. Narendra, and there is some issue with Dr. Kishalai. He will not going to able to join this meeting. He has informed prior hand. Uh, Gopal sir, should we start? Yes, yes, please let us, so. let us start. Yes, yes. Let, us yeah. start. let us okay. start. Okay, good evening to my respected seniors and my teachers, as well as my junior colleagues, my our students. Uh, we have got different topics to discuss today regarding the uh, prostate cancer. First one is the management of localized prostate cancer that will be presented by uh, Dr. Mrinal Tandon, followed by the question answer, as well as uh, after that, that there is a topic is management of strategies of the biochemical recurrence after radical prostatectomy, uh, then which will be presented by Dr. Narendra Singh Kurmi. After that, the topic uh, that is the recent advances in the metastatic prostate cancer that will not be presented today, that will be discussed in the next part of the uh, next part of the CA prostate discussion. And the next last two topics are the prostatic biopsy and open steps of uh, open radical prostatectomy that will be presented by the Dr. Jyotin Angshuman. Now, without delaying the time, I just want to start this procedure with permission of my uh, respected seniors. And we should be very much strict to our time. The many, total time stipulated for every presentation is 20 minutes so that you can complete it by 10 to 12 minutes maximum. So we can get the eight minutes for our discussion. Okay, uh, Mrinal, yes, sir. Start your, start your part. Yes. And this part uh, will be. Good, uh, good. Uh, uh, I just want to interrupt you, Mirna. Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, this part will be taken care by Doctor uh, Doctor R K Gopal Krishna, sir. He will cross you according to the need, and uh, rest of the faculties are also invited to cross according to the need. And then over to uh, Doctor Mirna to you. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening to my uh, colleagues and my teachers, sir. Uh, today I'm presenting the management of the locally uh, localized carcinoma prostate. Now, coming to the localized carcinoma prostate, first it is a organ confined disease. It is the uh, tumor stage uh, up to uh, T T two C. And coming to the na natural history of the disease, it may be the indolent. It may be the highly aggressive. One in six men will be diagnosed with a prostate cancer in the lifetime. Only one in 35 men will be die from the prostate cancer. Now, criteria to consider when uh, selecting appropriate treatment for the carcinoma prostate. It is a tumor uh, tumor potential aggressiveness, tumor general, uh, patient general health status and the comorbidities, the patient life expectancy, the quality of the life of a patient. Now, uh, coming to the before uh, discussing the management of a localized carcinoma, the risk uh, stratification. 
it is first is uh, it is divided into nccc and gu guidelines it is a uh, very low risk low risk intermediate risk and the high risk and very high risk in uh, very low risk the clinical stage t1c listen score score less than 6 psa less than 10 uh, fewer than 3 biopsy cores positive psa density less than 0 0.15 Low, low risk, the clinical stage T1A, T2A, GLSEN score less than 6, PSA less than 10. Intermediate risk, the clinical stage T2B, T2C, as GLSEN score 7, PSA 10 to 20. High risk, uh, PSA more than 20, GLSEN score 10, 8 to 10, clinical stage 3, T3A. Now, uh, very high risk T3B, and it includes more than four cores with the GLSEN score 8 to 10. Now, uh, coming to the EUA uh, the risk uh, stratification of the localized carcinoma prostate, it is different from the NCCN guidelines. It is uh, it is divided into three, low, uh, low, intermediate, and the high risk. Intermediate is further divided into favorable and the non-favorable. Non in uh, low risk, the PSA, it is, uh, PSA is less than 10, 10 to 20, more than 20, GLSEN is less than 7. Is he uh, seven or more than seven? According to the T stage, it is T T one to T two A. Intermediate T two B T two C. Now, uh, intermediate risk group is further divided into the favorable and the unfavorable. According to the favorable, it is Gleason score three plus four, unfavorable four plus three. Percentage of biopsy core positive less than fifty, and uh, more than fifty, unfavorable. Now, where is there, there are various uh, normograms in the risk assessment of the patient. It is the Caton nor normograms. Second is the most important is the pattern tables. It uses the clinical features of uh, Gleason score, serum PSA, clinical stage to predict the number of the percentage with the specified stage and the Gleason stage uh, who would have the organ confined disease, extra prostatic extension, spinal vesicle invasion, lymph node involvement. Now, uh, this is another, so this is known as a, a CAPRA score. Uh, uh, this score has uh, variables at PSA, Gleason's grade, T stage, percentage of the positive biopsy, and the age of the patient. And it is, uh, according to this score, it is uh, categorized into the low risk, intermediate risk, and the high risk, according to the score. That is 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 10. Now these are the Roche formula uh, for the lymph node status and the spinal vesicle invasion. Now, uh, this is another uh, normogram. This is known as the uh, Briganti norm normogram. It is for the lymph node involvement. It includes the preoperative PSA, the clinical stage according to the MPMRI, the maximum le uh, lesion diameter at MPMRI, biopsy of the Gleason score, and the percentage of the cores with clinically significant prostate carcinoma. Now, uh, what is the Epstein's criteria? Uh, for the for uh, determining the uh, in, indolent whether the tumor is indolent, it is it is uh, it it has uh, further uh, it, it 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 includes the indicators like the Gleason score less than six, tumor volume less than zero point, organ confined, PSA density less than two needle cores positive, less than fifty percent of the any positive cores. Now this is a Caton nor normogram. And the Caton criteria for the indolent carcinoma prostate is the organ confined, less than 0.5 ml tumor volume, Gleason uh, less than uh, 6. These normograms are basically used for the for the whether to give the active surveillance or not. Now, evaluating the life expectancy and the health status of the uh, patient, this is very important. It is It, it includes the G8 screening tool and the Kelly tool. In G8 screening, to total eight uh, items are there according to the food intake of the patient, weight loss, morbidity, BMI, age of the patient, and the total score is zero to seventeen. And according to this score, it is further it, 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 it the patient is classified as a fit, frail, disabled, or severely comorbid. Now uh, this is a Kelly score, and uh, the, the now EUA guide guidelines what uh, the, what it says about the health status and the life expectancy of a patient. Okay, uh, recommendations is uh, use the individual life expectancy, health status, and comorbidity. It has a strong recommendation. Uh, systematically screen the health status of a patient. It has a strong. The uh, by, while using the uh, these uh, the the scores genetic eight and the mini Cox uh, tool, it has a strong recommendation. No treatment options of the patient for the localized uh, carcinoma prostate. It is divided into the uh, conservative management, radical prostatectomy, uh, surgery, and, uh, radiotherapy, hormonal therapy, and the focal therapy. Now, active surveillance, uh, detailed primary therapy, until there is a evidence of progression. It is an intent to cure 
persist. Goal is to distinguish the clinically insignificant carcinoma prostate from the life-threatening disease. Now, patient selection for the active surveillance. It is the low to intermediate risk patient, intermediate favorable patients, PSA less than 10, life expectancy more than 10 years, up to 2A. Now, candidates not suitable for active surveillance is the family history of carcinoma prostate, African uh, American men, Follow up in uh, active surveillance is uh, semi annual PSA, DRE, and the annually we do the biopsy. Now, reclassification criteria for the treatment in the active surveillance is that whenever there is a disease progression, that is the GLISS score, it goes to four to five, more than three, three cores biopsy, greater than 50% of the core positive. Increase in the disease extent, state migration, and the patient preference. You know, uh, Coming, coming to the unwed consequences of the uh, active surveillance, the patient needs the multiple biopsies. There may be infection, erectile dysfunction, delayed tre treatment until the video uh, window of the opportunity for the cure has closed. Percentage of the cure curable carcinoma at the time of progression is 30 to 90 minutes. Now, uh, watchful uh, waiting. Um, in uh, monitoring until the progression that, the, that requires the palliative treatment, no intent to cure. Goal, goal is to limit the morbidity from the disease and the therapy. Now, candidates for uh, watchful waiting, any, T, any PSA glistens less than 7 or equal to 7, the life expectancy less than 10 years. Now, the active surveillance and the watchful waiting, this is the chart which showing uh, the comprehensive uh, chart which shows the active surveillance. It is, uh, it is done for the curative intent where watchful waiting palliative. Life expectancy more than 10 years, less than 10 years. Uh, it is for uh, low risk can apply to the any, any stage of the patient. Uh, watchful waiting. Now, uh, this is uh, now coming to the surgery. It's a radical prostatectomy. Uh, I am not going into the detail of the radical prostatectomy. My colleague is saying radical prostatectomy details. Uh, it is a complete removal of the prostate spinal vesicle with pelvic lymph node dissection. It is still the gold standard. Uh, yeah, not not all uh, carcinoma cells are eradicated by the radiotherapy. If the gland remains in situ, possibility of new carcinoma from the retained epithelium. Now, the advantages of the radical prostatectomy, as we already know that the possibility of a cure with minimal collateral damage, more accurate pathological staging. If the treatment fails, the curative salvage radiotherapy. Now, the disadvantage is possibility of incomplete resection. If, if not performed properly, if the tumor not confined to the gland. The risk of erectile dysfunction, risk of urinary incontinence. Now, the patient selection of the radical prostatectomy, good uh, general condition of the patient, life expectancy more than 10 years, tumor biology significant and completely resectable. Now, uh, what are the priorities of a patient with a CA prostate? Now, uh, this is a, a trifecta and another is the pentafecta. Then in uh, trifecta, there is uh, three wants to survive. Uh, the patient wants to survive with a tumor clearance, wants to remain continent, wants to preserve their potency. So uh, there are the, these are the approaches, abdominal, uh, a perineal approach, there are various advantages, disadvantages, retropubic approach, wide exposure, able to perform pelvic lymph node dissection, less chance of rectal injury, less risk of positive tumor margin. Now, uh, laparoscopic and uh, robotic, and uh, now coming to the complications. Complications of radical prostatectomy, sexual dysfunction is 20 to 100%, uh, urinary incontinence 4 to 70%, there will be stricture formation, mortality less than 1%. Now coming to the uh, another modality of the treatment, that is the radi radiotherapy, uh, external beam radiotherapy, uh, brachytherapy. The brachytherapy, low dose brachytherapy and the high dose brachytherapy. Now the dosage of uh, radiotherapy, external beam, uh, currently, the dosage is 76 to 80 gray or more. Improve the cancer control. Low risk patients, 70 to 72 gray. Uh, intermediate risk of the patient, 75 to 76. High risk, 80 gray and more. Doses above the 80 gray, not beneficial. Now, external beam radiotherapy. These are the radiotherapy gamma radiations. 
photons directed at the prostate on the surrounding tissue with multiple fields. CD CRT to minimize the radiation injury to the bladder or the rectum. IMRT provides the localized localization of the radiation dose to geometrically complex fields and EGRT. Now, radical uh, external beam radiotherapy is just for uh, basically for the age less than uh, 70 years, tumor stage T1b, T2, and T3. Lymph node involvement detected by the lymph node sampling. The risk of lymph node involvement more than 15%. Documented spinal vesicle invasion. Gleason score more than equal to 6. PSA greater than equal to 20. Radiotherapy uh, side effects uh, are basically the injury to the microvascular of the bladder, bladder which give rise to cystitis or uh, rectum which give rise to proctitis or urinary incontinence if the radiation dose is more than 50 grades. Erectile dysfunction in 50% of the uh, patients begin about Split. one year after the completion of the treatment. Uh, PD-5 inhibitors are useful in ameliorating the erectile dysfunction associated with the radiotherapy. Now, contraindication uh, of uh, radiotherapy prior TURBT, uh, T, uh, TURP, sorry, TURP, the uh, prostate does not hold the seeds well associated with increased risk of the urethral stricture. Inflammatory bowel disease, or prior radiotherapy. Now, endpoints for the treatment success or the failure of the radiotherapy. It's like the cancer cells are not killed immediately after the radiation. They sustain lethal DNA damage but do not die until the next attempt to enter into the cell division. The PSA level gradually decreases from up to two to three years after the completion of the radiotherapy. Accordingly, the PSA level is usually monitored at six months interval until it reaches the NIDER value. Now, uh, coming to the PSA bounds, uh, due to the radiation prostatitis uh, seen in 20% uh, of the patients, usually uh, during the first two years, more common with the brachytherapy. The PSA bounds of more than uh, greater than 1.5 has been associated with biochemical failure, metastasis, and the prostate cancer death. Or treatment results of the external uh -huh. beam radiotherapy. Brinal, uh, you have got three minutes more, huh? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, sir, I'm completing. Uh, I'm coming to the uh, brachiotherapy, it is easy to perform. Uh, permanent implants, uh, low dose radiotherapy, and the temporary implants, high dose radio, uh, high, uh, high, high dose radiation therapy can be given. Now, contraindications for the brachiotherapy the high volume of a disease, high risk disease, prior TURP. The side effects of the brachytherapy, urinary symptoms, urinary retention, erectile dysfunction, impotency. Now, uh, adjuvant radiotherapy and the salvage radiotherapy. Um, uh, the adjuvant ra radiotherapy is uh, given in spinal vesicle invasion whenever there is a lymph node positive, uh, lymph, lymph node metastasis, extensive extra capsular expansion. The salvage ra radiotherapy, uh, we monitor the PSA every uh, four months with the early salvage radiotherapy being initiated when the PS PSA re uh, reaches 0 0.2 nanogram to uh, per ml up to uh, 0 0.5. Uh, before 0, 0 0.5, we have to give the salvage ray radiotherapy. Now, uh, these are, I have already discussed uh, this uh, radiotherapy already discussed. Patients most likely to have favorable response to salvage radiotherapy are those with PSA recurrence long after the surgery, slowly rising PSA level, low-grade tumor, no spinal vesicle invasion or lymph node metastasis. No, I, uh, I'm not going to the detail of uh, primary hormonal therapy. It is, uh, uh, it's, uh, the hormonal therapy is never curative. Uh, bilateral orthodectomy and estrogen administration have largely replaced by luteinizing hormone and the releasing hormone analogs. Coming to the focal therapy, it is the cryotherapy, high intensity focused ultra ultrasound and uh, radio frequency ablations. Uh, cryoablation, cryoablation destroys the prostate tissue through the freezing. Cryoablation has been used as a primary treatment for the salvage after, after radical prostatectomy or radiotherapy. The initial results were poor with the incomplete eradication of tumor and the high complication rates. Advantages of cryotherapy, it is minimally invasive, does not involve the radiation exposure, repeated treatments are possible. Radio frequency ablation of interstitial tumor uh, kill the cancer cells selectively. Radio frequency intensity ablation induced hyperthermia has been investigated as a treatment of the primary tumor in combination with radiotherapy and, and salvage after radiotherapy failure. Now, high intensity focused ultrasound uh, 
this is acoustic energy can be used with uh, ultrasound focusing to generate the heat within the prostate gland. It is the uh, transrectally applied uh, probes that is HIFU uh, can uh, elevate the tissue temperature of prostate up to 100 degrees centigrade. Now, uh, coming to the management algorithms, uh, this is a, a UA guidelines for the localized carcinoma prostate. As they already discussed that the low, low risk uh, patients, the preferred uh, treatment uh, modality is the active uh, surveillance. Active surveillance have a strong re-recommendation and active surveillance has a curative intent and uh, uh, perform uh, multi-parametric MRI imaging before the confirmatory biopsy. It has a strong recommendation. During confirmatory biopsy includes systemic and the targeted biopsies. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, no. Uh, the which we uh, we watchful for uh, watching if uh, if the patient have a life expectancy of the less than ten years, uh, based on the comorbidities of a patient. Now, uh, active uh, after active surveillance, the, there is a early low a low risk patient. Uh, we can off go go for a uh, surgery and the re re radiotherapy, but the strong recommendation is of uh, active surveillance only. Uh, who does who who do not want the active radiotherapy, then we can go for the radical prostatectomy or uh, radiotherapy. Uh, in uh, low, low risk patient, uh, the there is a strong recommendation that the whenever do the radical prostatectomy, there is no no need to perform the pelvic radical lymph node dissection because the. Uh, uh, Milan, you have you have yes. completed your time stipulated time period. Yes. Uh, we That's should complete. interrupt here, and I yes, may I request Dr. Gopal Krishna sir for further discussion and the queries. Yes, thank you. Thank um, you um, you have spoken about the uh, management of uh, carcinoma prostate uh, localized. Can you also enumerate the investigations? You have not mentioned what would be the sequence of investigations you would choose for a localized carcinoma prostate. Uh, sir, in uh, localized car carcinoma prostate, we can uh, we uh, first start with the uh, PSA. Uh, before PSA level, we start with the uh, urine examination of a patient. Here after urine, in a sterile urine, then we do the PSA examination of the patient. Uh, and depending upon the value of the PSA, then we proceed. And uh, after the PSA, then we go for the, uh, if, if it is suspicious, then we go for the MPMRI. And the, after MPMRI, then we can go for the biopsy. Okay. <clears throat> are there any advantages of doing the MPMRI before the biopsy? And are there any disadvantages? Uh, there are uh, advantages of doing the MPMRI uh, before the uh, uh, biopsy. Uh, because uh, in uh, also in uh, UAA guidelines, it is said that the uh, localized if, uh, carcinoma prostate Okay, the MPMRI uh, should be done before biopsy. It has a strong recommendation. And the other thing is that uh, if we if we do uh, uh, biopsy uh, before the MPMRI, the results may be fallacious. And uh, yes, after doing the no, what yes, what sir. are the advantages of doing the MPMRI before the biopsy? What are the advantages of pre biopsy MPMRI? <laughs> are there any advantages? <clears throat> <clears throat> Otherwise, I agree with you that yes. you will have to wait for about four weeks yes, sir. before you can do the MRI. Yes. So what are the advantages of pre-biopsy MPMRI? Uh, pre-biopsy MPMRI, we can... Uh, uh, to, for, the, for the tumor uh, mm -hmm. load, uh, we can... Uh, uh, we, we can go for, for exact tumor load. The MPMRI can be... Uh, uh, the other advantage of MPMRI is that uh, the the in in biopsy we can miss the anterior uh, lobe of the prostatic tissue. In MPMRI, the we can we can get the anterior lobe of the <clears throat> prostatic tissue, which is missed in usually uh, the biopsy. So, <clears throat> so the MRI pre biopsy MRI allows you to target the specific yes. area, yes. <clears throat> especially with the anterior horn, which may not yes, be. Sir targeted in a routine sextant biopsy. Yes, sir. The other advantage of pre-biopsy MRI is that in uh, what is the sensitivity of the MRI with regard to carcinoma prostate? In the literature? Uh, sir, it is uh, uh, in uh, carcinoma prostate, sir, it is uh, around uh, uh, 
in in PSA less than ten, that yes. is in yes. in early localized carcinoma prostate, or PSA less than ten, the sensitivity is is to the tune of about eighty five to ninety percent. Yes, sir. So therefore, there is also a role for avoiding unnecessary biopsy. Yes, if sir. the MPMRI does not show up a pyrad score or five lesion. Yes, sir. So these are the two advantages of doing a free biopsy MRI. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And are there any advantages of doing post biopsy MRI? Post biopsy, uh, uh, yes, sir. In uh, post biopsy uh, MRI, uh, if we uh, in if if we miss the that. Uh, um, that the ant anterior lobe of the prostate, then in then we can go for the it, it is an advantage in that. And the other thing is that in uh, post uh, biopsy MRI is that um, uh, in uh, in a, in a case of the if we are uh, missing the uh, saturation biopsy, we are we are not getting the no. tumor in this. Yeah, the yeah. advantage of post biopsy MRI is that um, sometimes the biopsy may not show up carcinoma prostate. There can be yes, many reasons for elevated PSA. There yes, are sir. many reasons for a hard prostate. Yes. Sir. So if the biopsy does not show up carcinoma prostate, then you don't need to do an MRI. So you can avoid an unnecessary MRI. Yes, so that is the only advantage of a post biopsy MRI. Yes. Sir. Now you know that there are other reasons for a hard prostate that is granulomatous prostatitis, yes, a yes. prostatic calculus. Yes. So these. So these can be reasons for a hard prostate and also an elevated PSA. So mm -hmm. therefore, yes. in some cases, you may avoid an unnecessary MRI and avoid the extra cost or the burden. Yes. So these are yes. so this is a question that will ask why pre biopsy yes. and why post biopsy. Second thing is that um, what is the role of uh, PSMA PET scan in localized carcinoma prostate? Is there any role? Is it a standard investigation? Uh, P, uh, PSMA uh, PET scan uh, uh, is not a uh, standard investigation. In, it's not. Uh, it, it is. It is done, uh, but it is not uh, standard in in uh, localized uh, carcinoma prostate. According I, to I, the, I agree with you. So, what yes. are the standard investigations for localized carcinoma prostate? Uh, for uh, standard investigations for localized carcinoma prostate, is yes, there imaging? Yes, so you said one is MRI. Yes, and yes, what sir. else? If the PSA MP, is more MP. than 10, would you like to add any other imaging? Would you like to add bone scan? Yes, sir. Yeah. Bone that's, scan. That's okay. So that is a standard yes, investigation. What type yes, of sir. bone scan is most accurate? So what is the bone scan that we do here, which is available here in Calcutta? What is the isotope? Uh, it's technetium 99. Uh, technetium, yes, sir. It is technetium 99, sir. Yeah, what yes. is the more accurate bone scan? The uh, more accurate bone scan is uh, that. Uh, it's sodium fluoride BM, bone scan. Yes, sir. Yes. And, uh, Why is that so? It picks up uh, the osteoplastic the, cells much yes, better. Yes, sir. Okay. Suppose your patient with an intermediate, uh, he's around 70 years of age. He has been found to have Gleason 4 plus 3 on biopsy because he had a PSA of 15. And he had some LUTS and his IPSS score is 17 by 25. <laughs> on ultrasound, he has some lateral lobal enlargement, about 40 grams. What would be your treatment strategy? So you have a patient who is age 70 years, PSA 15, biopsy shows Gleason 4 plus 3 adenocarcinoma, IPSS score is 17, that's moderate score, and ultrasound shows lateral lobes enlargement. How would you manage this case? Uh, sir, yeah, in this case, sir, uh, we... Uh... Go for uh, uh, 
sir p uh, we have to uh, first the life expectancy of a patient we have to calculate the yeah, life expectancy years, years yes sir yes sir uh, in uh, 70 years uh, uh, male sir uh, the um, the I, if we, it is it is a uh, it is it, it comes into the inter intermediate risk, risk patient sir yes, in yes. Uh, inter yes sir in the intermediate risk patient the first uh, choice of preference is the this uh, uh, surgery uh, radical prostatectomy but uh, yes sir choice is the uh, radical prostatectomy in this patient okay intermediate can you give risk. him options uh, yes, sir. I can give options of a uh, radical prostatectomy. I can give options of a radiotherapy okay? uh, uh, to this patient. And uh, and uh, both, uh, I, I'll explain the patient, both uh, adverse effect of the or radiotherapy. Is it pure, pure radiotherapy the, or is it or, uh, neoadjuvant radiotherapy? His PSA is 15. He is an yes, intermediate sir. risk. Gleason 4 plus 3. Is it only radiotherapy or is it new adjuvant radiotherapy? Is uh, would you cover him some with get, some hormones? Yes, sir. If we yes, sir. Yes. How long? We uh, uh approximately uh, four to six months. Uh, yes, for yes, sir. Yes. And. Um, uh, after uh, after that, uh, uh, we can go for a uh, radiotherapy. Or so you give the the hormones for about four to six months before the radiation. Yes, sir, uh, it it is said that uh, we have to give the radiotherapy. After radiotherapy, uh, we we add adjuvant hormonal therapy uh, to this patient. As Do it you is add in the intermediate. hormonal therapy before the radiation or after the radiation? After the radiation, according to the no. EU, EAU guidelines. No, you would usually add the hormonal, right. you will start them with hormonal therapy and you the hormonal given. therapy is usually given for approximately two months Yes, sir. prior to the restart of the radiation and after that the hormone therapy is continued for a further six months at least. In case of high risk, you need to give it for oh, yeah. at least two to three years. Yes. So what what is your worry about this patient? Uh, suppose you had another patient whose age is 65. His PSA is 8. Again, he has Gleason 4 plus 3. MRI shows a T2 prostate. And on ultrasound, you can see that he has got a middle lobar enlargement and his prostate is about 80 grams. He has significant IPSS score. 20 out of 25. How are you going to manage this case? You have a young man of 65. PSA is only 8. Yes. Gleason 4 plus 3. Uh, in On ultrasound, he, he has significant IPSS score and his middle lobe enlargement and lateral lobal enlargement of about 80 grams is seen on ultrasound. How will you yes. manage this case? Sir, uh, as the uh, IPSS score of this patient in this case, uh, I would uh, like to go for a uh, uh, for surgery. I, I would like to go for surgery in this patient uh, because the patient have a symptoms and the patient have a median lobe enlargement uh, for this for this yeah. region. I yes, sir. Suppose the patient does not want surgery. What can you do? What sort of surgery? Uh, I'll go for uh, sir, uh, radical prostatectomy. Radical prostatectomy. Suppose the patient says, I do not want to have radical prostatectomy. Can you suggest anything else? Any other options? Yes. Uh, you can do yes, a channel DURP. Yes. You can relieve him of his obstructive yes. symptoms. And yes, after that, you can send him for radiation. Yes, so these are the two options. So yes, pay sir. very much attention to the LUTS and the yes, urinary symptom score before you consider radiation. An important yes, uh, lesson that we all must learn that in early carcinoma prostate, whenever we contemplate radiation, 
after radiation his urinary symptoms can worsen yes sir. so we must be very much aware of his luts and relieve those before you send the patient for radiation yes sir okay lastly do we have one more minute shovik yes sir how do we treat radiation proctitis this is quite a common feature you have sent him for radiation yes sir he comes to you what yes. are the symptoms of radiation proctitis uh in uh, radiation proctitis the patient complains of uh, that uh, bleeding uh, uh, per rectum bleeding. yes yes sir and uh, uh it may be associated with hematuria also okay. no hematuria okay uh, i'm talking about proctitis pro uh sorry because as a urologist you will have to manage the proctitis also the yes, radiation specialist will just lift up his hands and send it back to you how will you manage radiation proctitis anybody else what are yes. the symptoms of radiation proctitis anybody among the student mute <clears throat> students who wants to call it here good evening sir yes sir sir bhai sum jatin sir jatin sir yeah yeah jatin sir uh, jatin yeah. sir radiation proctitis it will, uh, there will be also spurious the complaint of spurious diarrhea yes okay uh, and uh, <clears throat> and it is usually self limiting sir sir radiation. they can have they can have mucus diarrhea spurious diarrhea they can have uh, tenesmus and they can have bleeding pr in in more advanced cases how will you manage sir. just principles mild variety and major bleeding how will you manage yes jatin sir uh, <clears throat> uh sir uh, uh, we can uh, start sir uh, antibiotics and uh, what antibiotics antibiotics can worsen it isn't it so quickly anything else apart uh, from antibiotics say... anything else so the first thing is that all patients who get radiation must be given bulk laxatives always that is a that yes, will sir. that is an important step to prevent this sort of spurious diarrhea secondly before antibiotics yes you can send the stool for culture and if there shows any clostridium or any other unknown bacteria then you can treat it thirdly what other treatment if there is severe bleeding whom will you refer to which specialty will which? be you will Okay, uh, yes, sir. For uh, for uh, for colonoscopic uh, uh, ab uh, ablation of the rectal vessels. Uh, how do they, how do, for what is, how do they ablate it? Uh, what energy is used? Yes. Sir. Argon beam. Argon beam. Yes. Yeah. Sir. So you so yes, you must sir. send them for sigmoidoscopy to exclude yes, any other reason for bleeding, and then yes, they sir. can have argon beam. Okay, Shobhi, back to you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Pranav, right thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, can I just chip in with one point? Yes, please, Shobhi. Yes, yes, uh, yes. For the treatment of radiation proctitis, normally, uh, if the patient does not respond to uh, probably uh, APC, we have one more modality, which is called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. yes uh, which yes. is uh, available in very few centers across the country uh, and uh, one more thing we can add some steroid enema i just want to make it that steroid enema yes absolutely okay thank you dr dr patok do you want to make any comment no 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 perfect absolutely okay okay come up in a beautiful uh, night Uh, thank you uh, to gopal sir and dr minal both of you thank you now thank just you, to, just want to shift to the next presentation uh, is uh, dr narendra is available hello is dr narendra is available 
I just uh, came to know that uh, he is busy in the some emergency OT. He will be available by half an hour. Uh, still, uh, till now, we are shifting to Dr. Jatin. Yes, sir. Jatin is going to present two uh, two back to back presentations. Over one is over the prostatic biopsy, another is one on the steps of the radical prostatectomy. Yes, Jatin, handed over yes, to sir. you. Hello, sir. Hello. Well. Hello. Hello. Sir, my slide, sir, visible. Uh, yeah, your screen is visible. Hello, my, uh, sir. Uh -huh. My slide, sir, is my slide visible? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. visible. Yes, visible. Please carry on. Please carry. Please carry on. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, prostatic biopsy introduction uh, the uh, uh, to uh, as a start in the history uh, trust of the prostate was first described by Watson and Collins in 1968. Jatin, just want to interrupt you. You have got two presentations. You will get 10 minutes each. Okay. okay. 10 minutes for each presentation. Huh? Okay, sir. okay. 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 So okay. till 1980s, it was a digital directed prostate biopsies were common. Later, it was replaced by trust. And uh, prostate sonography before that was uh, of uh, use uh, helpful. It uh, helps in uh, identifying the different uh, uh, zonals, uh, uh, zones of the prostate. And uh, the need for the biopsy, why do we do go for the biopsy? Is It is based on the PSA level, DRE findings, and the imaging uh, of the patient. Factors to consider beforehand, overall health of the patient should be assessed, age of the patient, family history, then therapeutic options, and wishes of the patients and other, uh, if any risk factors like cardiac risk factors should be addressed. The uh, prostate cancer elevated risk. <clears throat> Men older than 50 years of age uh, uh, should uh, should uh, go for a screening uh, as they have an elevated uh, risk if they have any family history of prostate cancer and uh, in more than 45 years of age. And if, if the patient belongs to Afro-American Afro uh, population, men with PSA level greater than 1 nanogram per ml at 40 years and greater than 2 nanogram at uh, 60 years. PSA threshold for biopsy. Uh, historically, it is recommended to do prostate biopsy if serum PSA is more than 4 nanogram per ml. But prostate cancer prevention trial uh, showed, uh, showed that there is no safe PSA threshold that can rule out prostate cancer in any age range. So 15% had uh, prostate cancer when PSA was less than 4 nanogram per ml. Prostate biopsy indications. So, uh, if there is a positive DRE regardless of the P, uh, PSA level, and if the PSA is 4 to 10 nanogram per ml based on the patient risk uh, benefit, uh, in uh, PSA levels are 2.5 nanogram per ml or less and PSA velocity uh, is 0 0.35 nanogram per ml or greater per year. If the PSA levels are 2.6 to uh, 4.0 nanogram per ml and the PSA level of uh, 4 or greater, especially if uh, free PSA level is 10% or less. Uh, EAU guidelines have uh, strong recommendations to the, uh, uh, to, uh, to the statement that to avoid unnecessary biopsies uh, offer further risk assessment to asymptomatic men with uh, a normal DRE and a PSA level between 2 to 10 prior to performing the prostate biopsy. Use uh, <clears throat> one, uh, and one of the tools uh, that can be used a risk calculator, imaging, and an additional serum or urine-based marker. Uh, <clears throat> limited PSA elevation. Limited PSA elevation alone should not prompt uh, immediate uh, biopsy. Uh, prostate specific antigen level should be verified after a few weeks in the same lab uh, using the same assay under uh, standardized condition that is uh, no ejaculations or no manipulations prior to the uh, PSA estimation and no UTI. Uh, repeat biopsy indications are uh, if the PSA is rising and or persistently elevated and <clears throat> Atypical small SNR proliferations were found in previous uh, biopsies and extensive uh, multiple biopsy sites. And if uh, 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 prostate intraabdominal neoplasia is uh, found or uh, positive urinary PCA3 or other newer genomic tests such as confirmed uh, MDX can be found from the tissue taken for biopsy. And suspicious lessons in the prostate magnetic uh, prostate uh, MRI can uh, go for uh, repeat biopsies. Additional investigations after negative uh, prostate biopsy are uh, Progenza, Select MDX, PHI, 4K score test, confirmed MDX. 
the, uh, there are some uh, trials uh, which uh, suggested that if a prostate biopsy is unnecessary prostate biopsy could be avoided by the use of uh, MP MRI, which is like PROMISH trial in 2017 and later precision trial in 2018, which showed that 17% of the biopsies could be uh, avoided uh, if MP MRI was done. Uh, uh, previous to the biopsy because in many of the cases uh, the PSA rise can be due to other uh, reasons like prostatitis or uh, uh, any manipulations of the uh, uh, urethral or uh, rectal passage. So EOU guidelines uh, has a strong <coughs> recommendation uh, for uh, to not use MPM <coughs> uh, System, uh, systemic uh, biopsy is an acceptable approach if MPMRI is uh, unavailable. And recommendations for all patients are to do not use uh, MPMRI as an initial uh, screening tool and adhere to PIRATES guidelines for MPMRI acquisition and interpretation. Uh, <clears throat> these are the EAU guidelines so prior to biopsy. Perform uh, MPMRI uh, before prostate biopsy, which is a strong recommendation. And, uh, 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 and when MPMRI is negative, and clinical suspicion of prostate cancer is high, perform systemic, systematic biopsy based on shared decision making with the patient. The prostate biopsy contraindications are if there is a significant coagulopathy, severe immunosuppression, or acute prostatitis. Uh, the, the procedure of the prostate biopsy. So informed consent has to be taken. Herbal supplements, if uh, was if it's being taken by the patient, should be discontinued. If uh, low dose, if patient is on low dose aspirins, uh, that should need to be discontinued. Anticoagulant, anticoagulant therapies should be stopped seven to ten days before the procedure. And if any novel oral anticoagul anticoagulants like pixaban, dabigatrin was there, then two to five days before the procedure, the agent has to be stopped. In high risk uh, thromboembolism uh, cases, we can go for bridging with unfractionated heparin. Antibiotic prophylaxis uh, is recommended for all patients undergoing prostate biopsy irrespective of uh, risk factors. There is no definitive evidence for superiority of a longer course or multiple dose compared to a short course of single any uh, dose protocols. Increasing resistance to fluoroconols, recent interest in uh, <clears throat> uh, rectal swab culture before biopsy is not cost effective. These are the antibiotics which we can be given to the patient before the biopsy. Uh, a cleansing enema can also be uh, administered to the patient. The, uh, the patient positioning has to be uh, if left lateral decubitus with uh, knees and hips flexed at 90 degrees. The arm board uh, attached parallel to the table and uh, pillow between the knees helps maintain the position. Uh, buttocks should be flush with the end of the table to allow manipulation. Uh, <clears throat> the right lateral decubitus can also be uh, uh, chosen based on the uh, surgeon selection. Anesthesia, normally uh, recommendation is trust guided infiltration anesthesia uh, near the nerve bundles can be given. Uh, or uh, one to two points lignocaine uh, using a long spinal needle and uh, under trust guidance along the biopsy channel of the transducer, it can be uh, given around five to 10 ml, 10 ml infiltration is done. Or uh, interrectal topical anesthesia with local anesthetic uh, is also uh, <coughs> uh, inferior and is uh, not recommended. The procedure is initial uh, digital rectal examination should be performed to uh, know the, if any uh, nodule is felt or not. Then prostate volume is uh, determined uh, and imaging in sagittal and transverse planes is done. Examination starts at the base and ends in the apex. So suspicious uh, lesions uh, uh, are, uh, are identified uh, on trust. Uh, lesions is characterized according to the echogenicity, whether it is hypoechoic or hyperechoic, uh, uh, whether calcifications are there. Any uh, abnormalities in the contour is there, any cystic uh, nature of the lesion is there. The biopsy gun that we choose for the, the procedure is 18 pass needle uh, core biopsy gun. And the, uh, <clears throat> the biopsy gun has to be advanced, uh, advances the needle 0 0.5 cm and uh, samples the subsequent 1.5 cm of the, of the tissue with the tip extending 0 0.5 cm beyond the area sampled. Uh, sextant biopsy, uh, one uh, in sextant biopsy, one core from the base and mid and apex bilaterally is taken. Vast majority of the adenocarcinomas arise in the post uh, postrolateral, uh, uh, the peripheral zone, resulting in false negative uh, results. So, extended core biopsy techniques are uh, recommended. Uh, it is uh, the more recommended is the 12 core systematic biopsy that it incorporates the apical and far lateral cores. Uh, above that, uh, for saturation biopsy, 18 to 21 cores can be uh, taken. Uh, this is the diagram showing the uh, uh, reason of the prostate that uh, that uh, that is taken in the biopsy. Uh, uh, repeat and saturation biopsy. Patient uh, having ele uh, has elevated uh, PSA value or abnormal uh, digital 
uh, examinations with one or more negative prostate biopsies uh, uh, and uh, second prostate biopsy in cases of uh, negative findings on initial biopsy justified if concerned about undet undetected cancer persists. Uh, so, uh, coming to what are the risks and uh, complications of the procedure, incidence of serious complications are very less. Uh, there can be uh, bacterial infection, hematospermia or hem hematuria, the, uh, rectal bleeding, prostatitis, or in some cases, there should be fever greater than 101 degrees. So, in this case, for the management of the patient, uh, he can be hospitalized after prostate biopsy. Uh, generally, 0 0.6 to 4.1% is the incidence of hospitalization after prostate biopsy. Any patient with uh, complaint of uh, fever after biopsy should be assessed for the presence of sepsis. The main cause is usually uh, fluoroquinolone resistant fecal uh, bacteria. Predominant organism is E. coli. Suscept uh, susceptibility uh, in cases, in these cases, we can uh, go for second and third gender cephalosporins, amikacin, and uh, carbapenems. Post biopsy infection uh, risk factors uh, normally, the uh, non white race uh, have, are, more, are more at risk of developing infection and increased number of uh, comorbidities. If the patient has uh, diabetes or uh, other comorbidities, they are more uh, risk of developing in, uh, infections after the biopsy. And if there is prostate enlargement, if there is foreign. Uh, travel is there, recent antibiotic use uh, is there, or number of uh, previous uh, biopsies uh, is documented. Uh, bleeding, it is found that in, uh, the incidence is 23 to 63 percent of the patients. Uh, uh, control uh, measures are direct pressure by probe or digitally. A rectal tamponade can be given uh, using uh, inflated condom or, uh, uh, or simply by uh, the placement of a <clears throat> uh, 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 gauze package for around one to two hours or endoscopy and colonoscopy with injection of epinephrine can be uh, given. Hematospermia is uh, has an incidence of 9.8 to 50.4 percent of the patients uh, and its uh, duration is around four to uh, five weeks. Other complications like vesovagal response has been reported in 1.4 to 5.3 persons. It, uh, uh, it, uh, in these cases, it's, uh, the procedure should be terminated and the patient should be placed in prandial level <coughs> with uh, IV fluids. Uh, there is also uh, reports of acute urinary retention following the procedure in uh, 0 0.2 to 0.4 percent of the uh, uh, patients. Uh, pathology of the prostate biopsy. Uh, sample handling, the biopsy sample should be uh, placed in 10 percent formalin. No compelling evidence uh, is there that uh, individual site specific leveling of force benefits clinical decision making uh, regardless, regarding the management. Uh, no more than two fourths uh, in each jar uh, be packed to avoid reduction of cancer uh, detection rate through the inadequate uh, tissue sampling. So, uh, according to the uh, Gleason's pattern, the uh, pat the Gleason patterns can be uh, one, two, three, four, and uh, five. Uh, they're based on the packing of the cell, uniformity of the cells, and uh, and the. <clears throat> and the uh, the uh, and the gland uh, pattern of the glandular proliferations. Uh, yeah, based on that, uh, listen pattern one is well differentiated, and as we go up to five, the differentiation uh, decre uh, differentiation decreases. Uh, uh, type four is uh, uh, type type five is comedo uh, comedo uh, carcinoma. And uh, listen <clears throat> grade one and two are uh, no longer uh, recommended for use since uh, cancer with those patterns has an outcome uh, no different from grade three. So, uh, Gleason scoring uh, ranges from uh, 2 to 10. The sum of the two most uh, prevalent Gleason patterns are used, that is primary and secondary. If only one pattern is present, the primary and secondary patterns are given the same. Uh, if, uh, if Gleason score be assigned separately for each anatomical uh, design, uh, designated site, the highest score of the tumor will represent the uh, entire case. If we uh, doing uh, it on needle biopsy, then the highest, uh, the most common pattern and the highest patterns are reported. And if the if the uh, biopsy uh, is from uh, after TURP, then the most common and second most common patterns are reported. So other tests that can be done on the tissue which have been obtained from the prostate are Polaris test. It is a, a genetic test done on tissue sample, measure, uh, measure the cancer aggressiveness. It is a 31 cell cycle associated genes. Other tests like Oncotype DX, uh, which is a RNA based test, it measures the cancer aggressiveness. Also 12 carcinoma associated genes and five reference genes can be uh, checked. The investigational uh, uh, techniques like color, uh, are color and power Doppler truss. It is based on frequency shift in the reflected uh, sound waves. Power Doppler is enhanced uh, color Doppler and uses the amplitude shift and it detects the post cancer uh, neovascularity. Uh, these are the uh, pictures which can be obtained in color Doppler and uh, power Doppler. 
patients with detectable color doppler flow within their uh, dominant uh, tumor at the time of biopsy are at tenfold increased risk of PSA recurrence after uh, radical retropubic prostatectomy. Jati, you have to cut short. Huh? <coughs> you have to cut short. You are just yes. overshooting the time. Huh? Make it yes, complete as early as possible. Huh? Okay, sir. I'm coming to end. Uh, also associated with high grade, uh, high glycine uh, grade, increased incidence of femoral vessel invasion and a lower biochemical disease free survival rate. Uh, also, contrast and uh, trust can be uh, used by uh, using uh, micro uh, identify the micro vessels in the range of 10 to 15 microns. Uh, IV micro bubble is used as the contrast. They are constructed with air or uh, higher molecular weight gaze agents encapsulated for uh, longevity in the range of 1 to 10 microns. These are the images. Elastography, real-time uh, sonographic images, uh, imaging of the prostate baseline and under uh, varying degree of compression uh, uh, is used. Uh, it uh, tells about the uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, it adds information about the stiffness of the prostate tissue. Malignant tissue is uh, more stiffer. Also, computerized 3D model target scan has uh, come into uh, uh, come these days. Uh, uses uh, which uses biplanar biplanar images, uh, which converts the ultrasound image into the 3D model, and it is useful for getting a stereotactic uh, biopsy. This is the uh, target scan. Uh, also, truss MRI fusion biopsy uh, has been uh, used in many cases using uh, which uses a software. MRI images are superimposed over the ultrasound image in real time, and the suspicious area in MRI is targeted using the truss image. It combines the strength of both MRI and truss systems. These are the images. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I may I request Dr. Pathar for a question answer and the crossing. Thank you, Jatin, for this wonderful presentation. Am I audible? You. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So before uh, you subject any patient to a cross biopsy uh, of the prostate, how do you counsel these patients? How do you counsel these patients uh, uh, for a uh, cross biopsy of the prostate? What must you tell them regarding, you may they mention up a lot of complications of cross biopsy for prostate. So how do you tell these patients about this? Uh, uh, sir, first of all, we have to uh, tell them the indications for, uh, for why we are going. Uh, we have to go for the truss biopsy, and yeah. uh, uh, sir, and uh, we have to uh, take uh, the consent uh, first, and uh, we have to rule out if any uh, other comorbidities are there, or uh, he has been using any anticoagulants or any other uh, drugs that could uh, that could be uh, that should be stopped before the procedure, and we should also explain the patient about the uh, post procedure. Uh, 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 post procedure any complications like uh, hematuria or hematospermia and uh, all those uh, factors which will uh, which will gradually subside and um, uh, and why uh, yeah. we should go for trust biopsy before uh, before uh, starting any treatment we should explain the patient uh, if uh, uh, for uh, for uh, the tissue diagnosis and uh, for uh, the uh, uh, yeah uh, yes, the, sir. You must uh, tell them, everyone, that up to 30% of the patients can develop complications following a truss biopsy prostate. And that yes, can be, they can bleed from the rectum, they can bleed from the urinary passage, and they may need a catheter in the immediate post-operative period. And amongst these uh, group of patients, only 2 to 3% of the patients can develop severe infection that when they go home, in spite of covering them with antibiotics, they may have to come back uh, for taking intravenous antibiotics and management of severe infection. And this has to be absolutely clarified. 30% and amongst the 30%, 2 to 3% of these patients can develop serious urosepsis following biopsy of the prostate. Okay. Gopal, please carry on. Gopal. Okay. I'll ask you two, two, pra two practical questions. Um, a patient for trust biopsy is on warfarin for an aortic valve replacement. How will you prepare him for the prostate biopsy? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, uh, in this case, sir, we can uh, go for uh, bridging therapy with non-fractionated uh, heparin, sir, uh, before the procedure. How will uh, you do it? 
sir we uh, first uh, we will stop warfarin uh, uh, around 7 uh, days before the procedure 5 to 7 days before the procedure um, uh, we can uh, start unfractionated heparin uh, during the period uh, uh, the uh, patient uh, can remain on unfractionated heparin sir uh, during the procedure um, go back uh and uh, we uh, after the procedure uh, what, we what can... dose of heparin would you give him mm, sir uh, of warfarin 5 days before the biopsy then what sir. are you going to do 40 uh, uh, mg subcutaneous 40 mg of what Hep uh, heparin sir uh, 40 mg heparin no What is what is the name of the molecule? Sir, want to ask you, sir? Uh, mm, Anybody else would like to answer? so the answer is yes you will stop the work first of all you will take a cardiological consultation number 2 you will stop the work for in approximately 5 days before then 2 days before the procedure you will start him on unfractionated flexin. yes flexin that is 40 or 60 mg daily depending upon what the cardiologist feels is the right dose on the day of the procedure you will not give him from the next day you will again start flexin and once yes. you feel that your bleeding period is over that is usually 48 hours then you will restart him on warfarin and um, sir when we start the warfarin we have to cover it with the uh, we have covered it with this unfractionated uh, heparin because yes. the warfarin will take 5 days, days to 5 days to come 5 days to work yes and during this period you will be checking the inr checking the inr yes secondly before the prostate biopsy do you do it on a full bladder or an empty bladder or what uh, do you do <clears throat> do you tell so, the patient uh, to drink water and keep a full bladder or do you tell the patient to pass urine and come what is the instruction that you give before transrectal biopsy prostate trans biopsy sir empty bladder empty bladder so if you do so, an empty bladder sometimes you may not be able bladder. to see the upper limit the bladder window which you normally see so the answer is usually you tell them to pass urine just 10 minutes before the biopsy so that the bladder is just slightly containing urine it should never be a full bladder so you tell them to pass urine just about 10 minutes before the biopsy okay so we back to you yes sir uh, jatin a small question yes. to you what is the antibiotic you use in your your institute for the prophylactic purpose ofloxacin with uh, on the or it or nidazol is has no role only ofloxacin ofloxacin ofloxacin, uh, ofloxacin. Uh, the rivaroxacin is the better choice according to the guidelines and one thing more yeah, the guideline says that in especially the EU, ua that is the pyrat 3 or more we can go for the biopsy okay yes. is there any subgroup of the pyrat 3 that where we can uh, may omit the biopsy is there any uh, any separate criteria that can be included with the pyrats uh, scoring that is the prostate um, a psa density if you go through the ncsn guideline they have said that the, if the uh, PSA density is less than 0.1. 0.1. In PIRAT3 group, you can omit the biopsy. And rest other groups, more than uh, 0.1, you can you have to go, you, you may go through the biopsy. And if it is more than 0.2, you should, you must go to the biopsy. Okay. Jati, thank you for the okay. uh, good presentation. Nice presentation. Now, again, hand it over to you for your next topic. Okay. Okay. okay.
sir uh, is it visible sir yeah uh, screen can be seen yeah not as yet uh, sir my slides are visible sir uh, sir uh, so uh, so open uh, going with open radical prostatectomy uh, so three uh, three goals of this surgery uh, which is called the trifecta is uh, cancer control preservation of urinary control and the preservation of sexual function you cannot so, see your slide your slides are not visible not visible sir uh, not not visible okay. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, is it visible, sir? Now? Yeah, yeah. Hello. What is visible? Sir, is it visible, sir? Ah, visible, visible. Yeah. Just proceed. Okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, going with the open radical prostatectomy, the three goals of the uh, surgery that has to be uh, kept in mind, which is called the trifecta of the surgery, is cancer control, preservation of urinary control, and the preservation of sexual functions. So, uh, starting with the surgical anatomy, as it is noticed here, the uh, uh, the prostate uh, lateral view from the prostate bladder and the uh, rectum, we can see that the dorsal vein as it travels on the anterior. Uh, aspect of the uh, urethra and uh, prostate, uh, it separates into the lateral branches, central lateral aspect of the prostate as we go uh, towards proximal part of the uh, uh, prostate. And there is a common trunk which is located over the urethra. This is the site where it is transected and the pelvic plexus uh, which can be seen on the anterolateral uh, aspect of the rectum. It is uh, comprised okay, uh, present around... Yes, present uh, 5 to 11 cm above the anal words and it comprises of the parasympathetic uh, innervations from S234 and hypogastric nerve which serves as the sympathetic uh, innervations. Uh, this is the uh, 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 photo which describes the in, uh, uh, blood supply to the prostate which comes from inferior vesical artery and it divides into the urethral vessels and the capsular vessels. The capsular arteries and veins are uh, intimately associated with the branches of the pelvic plexus uh, and forming the ne uh, neurovascular bundles. And this serves, these vessels serve as the landmark for the uh, identification of these nerves uh, in case uh, uh, the patient goes for a nerve sparing surgery. Uh, this is the uh, diagram which uh, shows the striated urethral sphincter. And uh, it is uh, clearly seen here that uh, the DVC travels through the striated center complex. Uh, and this is the uh, cross section of the uh, prostate, uh, one taken at the close to the bladder neck and another near the apex. As it can be seen near the apex, uh, the uh, striated sphincter can be seen and the smooth muscle of the urethra can be seen. And we go uh, as we go proximally towards the uh, bladder neck, the cross section shows the three fossa, which is uh, uh, present around the prostate. One is the prostatic fossa, which is uh, just above the prostate capsule. And uh, then it is the levator fossa. And posteriorly, it is the denonvillous fossa. And the neurovascular bundle lies between the levator fossa and the denonvillous fossa. So indications for radical prostatectomy are uh, intermediate risk organ confined CA prostate with life expectancy of more than 10 years or high risk organ confined uh, CA prostate with life expectancy more than 10 years or patients with uh, locally advanced CA prostate as a part of multimodal therapy. Pre-op preparations, uh, as a uh, part of pre-op preparation, we should do a complete medical surgical and anesthesia assessment of the patient with uh, pre-op assessment should identify the factors like prior abdominal or pelvic surgery and irradiation or prior transurethral surgery or any extensive prostate biopsies any history of significant inflammatory bowel disease, prior use of mesh during inguinal and incisional hernia repairs, and the size of the prostate. The anesthesia preferred is uh, general anesthesia. The position is, uh, uh, the patient is uh, usually placed supine on the table with the uh, pubis is centered over the break in the table. And uh, usually if it is a thin built patient, we, uh, we will not need for uh, a, any hyperextension. Uh, if it is an obese patient, we can go for slight hyperextended uh, position by approximately 20 degree trend level. Uh, position the patient. So incision is uh, given extraperitoneal. Uh, it is extraperitoneal incision, uh, which is uh, lower midline and uh, from the pubis towards the umbilicus. And uh, after this, the anterior fossa is inside the rectus muscles is separated in the midline. Then the transfer is uh, sharply opened to expose the radius space. Uh, and laterally, the peritoneum is uh, mobilized of the external iliac vessels to the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. Uh, 
the key steps of the uh, radical uh, retropubic prostatectomy are uh, pelvic lymph lymphadenectomy uh, then we go for opening of the endopelvic fascia and limited dissection of the uh, pubo-prostatic ligaments then we go for the suture ligation of the and transition of the center in the dorsal venous complex then uh, following this we go for the dissection of the urethra at the apex of the prostate and transition of the urethra then uh, there will be dissection of the prostate from the neurovascular bundles and securing and transition of the prostatic pedicles after that uh, transaction and reconstruction of the bladder neck is done and dissection of the seminal vesicles and ampullary portions of the vasa differentia is done and perform uh, it is uh, completed by vas vasicourethral anastomosis so pelvic lymphadenectomy the uh, the, the uh, boundaries of the pelvic lymphadenectomy is uh, up to the uh, distal it is up to the lymph node of croquet and uh, uh, cranially it is up, put up to the bifurcation or just to see above the bifurcation uh, and medially it is the bladder uh, neck, uh, sorry, uh, the lateral border of the bladder and uh, laterally it is the internal leg arteries and uh, uh, up to it can uh, it can be uh, done up to the hypogastric uh, vein taking the obturator uh, nodes into uh, into the uh, lymph, lymph node samples on the right side of the picture this is the fine uh, this is the right uh, 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 pelvic fossa after the final after the completion of the lymph lymphadenectomy. So uh, incision in endopelvic fossa and division of the prostatic ligament, the uh, fibro uh, the fib uh, as it can be seen, the endopelvic fossa is incised uh, away uh, uh, done away from the prostate, uh, the which uh, exposes the fibro adipose tissue, uh, which is covering the prostate, and it is carefully detached away to expose the pelvic fossa. And the pubic prostatic ligaments and uh, the superficial branches of the dorsal vein. Uh, during this process, uh, there should be the preservation of accessory potential arteries, which is seen in some patients, uh, uh, around uh, 20 to 20% uh, of the patients, which uh, have these accessory potential arteries. So, uh, this is done by anterior prostatic fossa is elevated with a right angle clamp to facilitate release of the accessory uh, potential uh, vessels. <clears throat> the, uh, then there is the ligation of the dorsal vein venous complex, which can uh, with this uh, during this process of the surgeon, uh, uh, it is uh, suppose the surgeon is a right-handed person, he has to stand on the uh, left side of the patient, and his hand should be parallel to the uh, OT table, and he has to uh, take uh, the first bite uh, from the uh, uh, the apex of the prostate. Uh, which encompasses the lateral margins of the uh, dorsal vein complex, and the same suture is uh, taken in the reverse direction uh, uh, from the perichondrium of the uh, symphysis pubis, and the procedure is repeated again to form a figure of eight uh, suture, and it is uh, uh, ligated. Then. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, coming to apical dissection of the prostate, the prostate sometimes in a small prostate, the uh, angle between the uh, prostate and the urethra is uh, uh, obtuse and sometimes it is very acute in case of uh, enlarged prostates. Here the striated sphincter and the surrounding uh, dorsal vein must be divided with care to avoid inadvertent incision into the apex of the prostate, which is uh, usually the most common site for positive margins. Uh, after that, uh, uh, after that, uh, there should be the overswing uh, of the striated uh, urethral sphincter and dorsal uh, vein. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, this uh, helps in controlling the back bleeding from the uh, dorsal vein complex. The uh, this is followed by the division of the urethra and placer, placement of uh, urethral uh, sutures. The, the urethra should be uh, divided first in performing a standard nerve release. Uh, if we uh, go for a uh, 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 nerve sparing technique, then uh, it should be uh, the urethra should be the first uh, uh, structure to be divided. If more aggressive nerve preservation is performed, the urethral incision should occur after the uh, nerve uh, release. Uh, this uh, uh, the urethra is uh, uh, cut open in the ant anterior two third uh, of its anterior two third part. An initial uh, suture is taken from the twelve o'clock of the uh, distal urethra. It is followed by uh, sutures taken at uh, two o'clock uh, and uh, seven, five o'clock, then seven o'clock and ten o'clock. Then uh, finally, the lastly, the six o'clock uh, suture is taken. Uh, at the usually, the six o'clock uh, suture is not taken very uh, deeply because uh, this uh, usually this is the site of uh, the passage of the neurovascular bundle in some patients. So uh, after that, clamp is uh, placed between uh, the posterior striated urethral sphincter and neurovascular bundle, and it is uh, division of the posterior striated sphincter occurs. 
uh, where neurovascular bundle is uh, placed posteriorly as shown in the uh, last part of the diagram. So identification and standard preservation of neuro neurovascular bundles. Uh, a, a backup clamp or a spawn stick is uh, used during the release of the neurovascular bundle to manipulate the prostate. The clamp facilitates a gentle elevation of the prostate during the release and can result in less fraction of the neurovascular bundle because the prostate is released from the uh, bundle rather than the bundle being released from the prostate. This dissection should begin with the blood and neck where this fascia forms a thick band. Uh, this, uh, this is a diagram with uh, <clears throat> we shows the uh, urethra after the uh, dissection is complete. So the benefit in uh, open surgery is that we have a tactile stimulation uh, that can be uh, felt if, uh, uh, that is if uh, can feel induration in the lateral pelvic fossa, the, that means the bundle should be excised. The neuro, there is no uh, benefit in keeping the bundle as this uh, implies that the, uh, uh, that it is a uh, locally advanced uh, uh, cancer. So, uh, if uh, another uh, another uh, point is, if the bundle is fixed to the prostate, then also it should not be preserved. And if the prostate is softer with the uh, and one point to uh, remember is the prostate is softer with the catheter out, and it appears easy to uh, identify the correct plane for release of the neurovascular bundle. <clears throat> Uh, uh, in this diagram, we can uh, see the uh, uh, neurovascular bundles uh, have been uh, the neurovascular bundles uh, as the um, vessels which have been supplying to the prostate has been clipped. Uh, one more thing is the vascular branches of the neurovascular bundle are best controlled by hemo clips uh, placed parallel to the bundle uh, because here thermal use of thermal energy is contraindicated in any form, unipolar, bipolar, harmonic, and it should not be used uh, on the neurovascular bundles or its branches. Uh, this part uh, uh, shows the uh, posterior branches are uh, being clipped and uh, divided. Uh, then uh, this is the high entry release of the neurovascular bundle in the apex. This is the uh, at the end of the release of the neurovascular bundle uh, vessels from the uh, prostate. Uh, after that, uh, when the prostate is uh, released from the uh, neuro uh, vessels from the neurovascular bundle, the posterior dissection is done and the lateral branches are clipped and uh, divided. Uh, uh, the division of the uh, bladder neck and excision of the seminal vesicle is uh, shown here. The uh, anterior bladder neck is uh, incised uh, uh, and uh, it is followed by uh, the, the incision is carried along the lateral bladder neck as well and uh, then it is uh, divided. Uh, the, uh, here the caesar is inserted between the seminal vesicle and the uh, bladder wall and uh, the uh, uh, the vast difference is uh, clipped in the uh, second diagram as it, it is noticed and uh, it is divided. So uh, after the removal of the uh, prostate, the bladder neck uh, reconstruction and anastomosis is done. Usually we use a running or interrupted 2-0 absorbable suture uh, and uh, it approximates the full thickness uh, muscularis and mucosa forming a tennis racket uh, closer as it will be shown in the uh, subsequent slides. Closure is initiated in the midline uh, posteriorly and proceeds anteriorly until the bladder neck is narrowed to approximate the diameter of the urethra. By incorporating the mucosa and the closure, troublesome hemorrhage can be avoided. So uh, here it can be seen the tennis racket closure of the bladder neck as the uh, 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 as continuous suture is uh, given. Uh, this is followed by uh, inversion of the uh, mucosa using a 4-0 chromic. Uh, the, uh, at this point, the bladder neck can be uh, anastomosed to the urethra or uh, urethra or uh, buttressing sutures can be used to intersusset the uh, bladder neck it can, as it can be seen in the image. These sutures uh, prevent the bladder neck from uh, pulling open the uh, pulling open as the bladder fills. So uh, these are the uh, uh, into uh, this is the diagram which shows the intersection of the uh, bladder neck. Then uh, finally, the sutures which has been placed at uh, uh, in the distal part of the urethra at 12 o'clock, uh, 2, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 5, 6, 7, and 10 o'clock, they are approximated with the uh, bladder neck. Uh, and final, uh, this is the uh, uh, completion of the vesicular urethral anastomosis. Uh, thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Sir. May I request Dr. Patak uh, to continue? Okay. okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, 
thank you jatin it is a such a big thank topic it is so difficult to uh, complete this topic in such a small uh, period of time yes, so this radical retropubic prostatectomy huh, it is more or less it is sir. an anatomical operation uh, anatomical operation but first you yes. have to understand that what is the that the most important decision that you have to make in this operation is whether you are going to preserve the neurovascular bundle or you, whether you are going to go in for a wide local excision of the neurovascular bundle. Before yes. we had a proper understanding about the fascial disposition around the prostate, what was usually being done that the neurovascular bundle was being cut and left in place. That was the, the situation. Now, you, preservation of the neurovascular bundle is de by default. You have to preserve the neurovascular bundle. And if you find certain parameters which cause for infiltration of the neurovascular bundle, huh, then you have to go in for wide excision of this neurovascular bundle. And what may be that certain, this is an intraoperative decision. This is an entirely an intraoperative decision where you find an induration of the uh, neurovascular bundle or where is the fixity of the neurovascular bundle of the prostate. Or even after the removal of the prostate gland, if you find that the tissue is deficient posteriorly uh, on the posterior aspect of the prostate gland, then you have to go in for wide excision of the neurovascular. Certain preoperative factors which may give you some suspicion that the neurovascular bundles may be involved, and that would include important question, number one. Number two, on digital rectal examination, if you've got an epical mass, you've got an epical mass, and through your investigation, you'll find that it is extra capsular extension of the disease. But the most important thing is the, is the intraoperative decision. There's two decisions, preserve or excise. That's number one. Secondly, to be having an understanding about the facial disposition around the prostate. Now the prostate is intimately surrounded by the prostatic fascia. It is completely on anterior lateral posterior side, it's completely by the, it is intimately adherent to the gland. A radical prostatectomy specimen must have the prostatic fascia in it. Secondly, the levator fascia. The levator fascia, it, it's like a carpet on the anterior and lateral surface of the prostate gland. And as it reaches the lateral pelvic wall, is reflected on the lateral pelvic wall as the end pelvic fascia. That's number two. And number three is the denon velus fascia that is on the posterior aspect, on the posterior aspect of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, 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 prostate between the rectum and the prostate. Okay, the neurovascular bundle occupies the position between the prostatic uh, fascia, the end of pelvic, uh, the levator fascia, which is being reflected uh, onto the lateral pelvic wall, and between the denon velus fascia. Now, this uh, this uh, neurovascular bundle it runs along the posterior lateral group of the prostate and it approaches goes towards the penis. Okay. Now, when it reaches the apex of the prostate, it is tethered medially at the apex of the prostate by an apical vessel. It is apical vessel, okay? And then after that, it pursues a more lateral course, okay? So it is pulled towards the middle by that. So any incision when you're dividing the urethra, it must not be at the apex of the prostate, but midway between the, uh, in the mid portion of the membranous urethra in order to prevent this apical uh, vessel being uh, uh, caught up, caught up, and damage to the neurovascular bundle. Okay, these are some issues. Okay, now how do you go about freeing this neurovascular bundle? See, after you have divided the prostate urethra, after you have divided, uh, you have placed sutures, sutures on on the on the uh, thick sutures and completely uh, on the on the distal urethra, and you have tucked them under a cover for subsequent anastomosis. What we usually do, what we've been taught to us and most of us is that we, the catheter is delivered into, the, into our wound yes. and we use traction on this catheter, okay? Now, using this traction on this catheter, it pulls up the neurovascular bundle and makes it very, very susceptible to injury. So the catheter at this stage must completely be removed, okay? And with the help of a sponge stick, you just roll the prostate and at the prostate of vesical junction, okay? And in this prostate of vesical junction, here, the, the levator fascia is thickest. Okay? You just use a right angle and you start creating a plane staying to the lateral side of the prostate and you go down uh, 
into the into that groove okay and you continue down anteriorly to, uh, towards uh, for distally till you come across this apical vessel that is pithering the uh, neurovascular bundle near the prostate okay you divide this apical vessel okay and then the neurovascular moves away laterally then you come to the midline okay you come to the midline at the midline you go a depth deeper till you reach the anterior surface of the rectum okay at the and then you retrace your path back to the mid portion of the prostate till you reproduce and then you find that the entire neurovascular bundle moves away from the prostate gland you do it in the opposite side okay on uh, that side and after both sides of free, uh, uh, of spread then you introduce the catheter back into the into the bladder now give a midline traction uh, over so you are rolling the, the prostate backwards you will find that there's a posterior vessel that is pithering the prostate okay you divide those posterior vessels more amount of prostate free and then you come across this lateral pedicle and you do divide this lateral pedicle in multiple layers you just want we don't try to divide this in one go with the right angle multiple layers you divide this lateral pedicle until more is free until you see the base of the seminal vesicle okay keep your dissection down at that and then you come to the uh, come to the anterior surface and you divide and get inside the bladder this is about preservation of the neurovascular band now if you find in duration and fixity to the neurovascular band what you follow the steps as i've described that you go from the prostate to vesical junction and you move ahead uh, if you find that you are not being able to separate the neurovascular it is very much adherent from there you rather than tracing back the same path now you go laterally towards to the lateral pelvic wall with the right angle and then you take up a bigger chunk of tissue from there and the move along the lateral border of the rectum back okay this is wide excision of the neurovascular bundle okay this is the fundamental difference and the most important uh, part of of the uh, operation of an open uh, open radical prostatectomy if you just follow this the rest of them are absolutely perfect gopal thank you sir thank you any request gopal sir uh, for further comment and uh, any discussion cannot hear you sir you are not audible sir yes, anshuman Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did any radical prostate operation? Uh, uh, yes, seen? sir. Yes, yes. okay. Uh, the next morning, when you go to give a ward round, you find that the catheter has come out. What will you do? Uh, sir, we have to uh, reintroduce the catheter uh, by uh, under guide wire. Yes, sir. Uh, first, we have to uh, uh, properly lubricate the uh, urethra. and uh, uh, it is uh, sir it is better to uh, <clears throat> to uh, under a um, uh, guide wire under a guide wire sir. so how will you introduce a guide wire um sir after proper lubrication uh, we uh, we have you to place the ward you can do it in the theater what 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 will you do sir uh, do it in the ward sir so you can introduce a guide wire in the ward after lubrication and then uh after uh, after the guide wire uh, uh, over the guide wire we have to uh, slide the catheter how do you confirm that the guide wire is in the bladder hmm. sir uh, if uh, uh, sir, uh, usually uh, we uh, if the during the ot we, if we find if there is any uh, uh, traction in the vesicular anastomosis or and things uh, or if there was a leak uh, in the uh, no, intra then uh, this that patient the next next morning you go to find that in the bed side the catheter okay. has come out you said you will put in a guide wire uh, if you put in a guide wire in the ward after proper lubrication the guide wire went in but it may go outside the urethra how do you confirm anybody else so we can go for uh, ultrasound uh, guidance 
by ultrasound Sir. guidance you will see the bladder is full or the bladder is empty anything else you can see if the bladder is empty what will you do but the uh, guidewire is uh, usually uh, uh, can be seen on the ultrasound sir. so by no, following i don't think that's a very good idea hmm. anyway for lack of time we will go we'll move on on the fourth day after radical prostatectomy you find that the drain is about 250 ml what will you do Uh, sir, we should uh, uh, send a drain fluid analysis uh, to find out if there is uh, any leak, uh, uh, any urinal leak on the vesicular anastomosis. Excellent. So, the, uh, if it is a, a urine, then uh, we can uh, have uh, we can say uh, if it is ten times uh, the uh, urea creatinine is uh, ten times that of the serum creatinine in the drain fluid. So, we can uh, confirm it is a leak from the vesicular anastomosis. Suppose it is normal. Suppose. The um, Sir. If it is uh, normal, sir, then uh, it uh, then it is uh, we can confirm it is not urine. Then uh, we can uh, have an idea if it uh, it can be a uh, limp, uh, limp, sir. It can be limp. Lymphoria. Lymphoria. What will you do? What will you do? Very quickly, twenty seconds. What will you do? Uh, sir, uh, lymphoria will. Uh, Will usually uh, sir, we decrease on its own. So, so we, we are short of time. Uh, okay, so we will move on. No, sir. The, the third participant has not joined yet, and I have called Nirmal Lopik. We are discussing. There is nothing to talk, uh, discuss after that. Okay. okay. So if there is. So you find that drain fluid creatinine is normal. So what will sir. you do? Uh, so we can confirm if it is uh, limb by uh, uh, by tra so looking for triglycerides in the drain fluid. Drain fluid triglycerides okay. and yes, okay. So the triglyceride level is very high. So you confirm that it is limb. What will you do? Mm. So we keep the drain for uh, uh, and uh, we'll observe if the uh, um, daily output is uh, coming down or. Yeah, that's right. You just need to reassure the patient, number one, because right. patient will be very worried and you need to keep the drain for a longer period of time until the lymphoria stops. Okay, Jatin. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Suppose on, uh, suppose on the fourth okay. day or the fifth day, patient went to the toilet to open his bowels. He had a sudden desire to open his bowels in the early morning. So he went to open his bowels and he passed a little bit of stool only. Then he came back very breathless and he's in his bedside. He's feeling very breathless. He's short of breath. He's having tachycardia. Sister came in quickly and checked his saturation. He's 86%. And then patient had a little bit of cough and there was a little blood in the cough as well. Uh, then sister told you in the morning when you came at eight o'clock around, this is what has happened. And she has put him on oxygen. Now the oxygen is back to, he's on two liters oxygen. He is, or he's on three liters oxygen. He is, of saturation is about 94, 95. What will you do? Is it okay? Uh, no, sir. Um, we, uh, we have to go for uh, X-ray of the chest, sir, to, uh, okay. to know if any uh, meds or has developed. Meds on the fourth day, fifth day after surgery, meds will develop. No, sir, no, sir. What do you expect? What? what? Pulmonary embolies. Yeah, correct. What do you expect? Yeah. Suspect. Only one, one word. After any major pelvic surgery, these symptoms you must suspect pulmonary embolies. Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. Gopal, please uh, give him the answer to that uh, catheter being displaced out in the first, yes. first day. So if you go to the ward and you find catheter has come out, the first thing is, number one, not to panic. Yes. Number two, you, you can try it out in the bedside if you wish. You take under proper sterile precautions. You 
introduce double dose of jelly and then you introduce a catheter by yourself if it goes in smoothly and it drains urine that's fine the other option is you take him to theater you do a flexible cystoscopy and under vision you put in a guide wire and then you can thread the catheter over the guide wire so the safest is to take him to theater do a flexible cystoscopy under guidance and pass in a guide wire and so, then put in a catheter sir probably oh, okay. trying the catheter uh, not to be done at the bed side it is probably side, done yeah. in the ha uh, it is to be done to the ot sir it will be okay. safe exactly that will be safe safe yeah maybe, maybe if it goes yeah. try it out but in the exam you should say you will take him back to theater okay. uh, and under cystoscopic guidance And, and that is the flexible flexible one to be at right. you will put in a guide wire and then put in a catheter uh, jatin can you tell yes. me about the roco stitch have you heard about this roco stitch yes sir <clears throat> sir uh, it is a uh, roco stitch is usually uh, used in sir lap uh, uh, reticular prostate during the vesicular anastomosis it uh, approximates the uh, uh, non billiards fossa sir with uh, uh, so it forms as a, uh, it uh, it, it gives a support to the vesicular anastomosis and it basically takes the bite from the posterior rhabdoid sphincter remnant of the fascia as well as the posterior surface of the detrusor of the bladder and this will give the support of the anastomosis as well as help you for the better continence yes um gopal sir himadji sir and uh, konishko sir uh, we have completed our presentations because uh, two of the students have not joined among the 36 participants it is very unfortunate 36 right now 38 elevens are consultants 11 yeah. persons are consultants the, the number of the students present uh, in the discussion is very few very we have got 20 or more than 20 pgts uh, from kolkata only but we have only few are available for the classes sir where is the the important topic like ca prostate is being discussed and our students it is also very much unfortunate that our students are not informing us that they are not going to present in the class only one of them has kisholoy has uh, made it beforehand but narendra has uh, accidentally picked the phone before of uh, nirmal lo before the starting uh, during the first presentation but after that he is not taking the call or he have yeah. not bothered to inform us yeah. uh, sir it is very much <laughs> unfortunate for us the class class is for them not for us yeah. but not the 11 11 11 or 12 uh, consultants are present on the class including shivaji yeah. sir prashanno sir anjun yeah. sir all are there uh, except uh, excepting the our faculty four faculties and but they are not have time to uh, come on the class uh, sir and one thing sir yeah, to this, say this is a this is something that we are seeing quite frequently or this is the trend yes sir that uh, this class is yeah. made for us yeah, <laughs> yeah. Made, made, made for them know. and we are huh, yes sir during their uh, mch yeah. or dnb course most yeah. of them are reading the textbooks and other things and they are probably yes, attending sir. these classes after they pass the exam <laughs> yes sir one of one of the person is there who is passed two years ago he is yeah. attending the class he is now consultant but they at least bother to uh, attend but our students present students are not that much interested in that and we are very much unfortunate that we have invited dr konishko he is from other discipline he has yeah. taken out the time he yeah. is present throughout the presentation but we cannot give him the proper topic proper okay. discussion area for for him Sorry. the main two topics that is the metastatic portion as well as the uh, biochemical reproduction after ca prostate uh, uh, after radical prostatectomy the main two topics which are mainly concerned to the radiotherapist as well as for the ATD therapy, all these things yeah. that are not being discussed. Though Dr. Konishko is always present here, and he is, we are really thankful to him. He has taken out my time own, for present. Okay. But uh, Ranjan sir is not uh, present at this moment. Uh, Gopal sir, may I request you to conclude the session as well as? Uh, 
convey this message know. to the <laughs> other I other dignitaries, sir. But Shovik, you are the master of ceremonies today, so I leave it to you, Thank you to begin and conclude the session. Uh, sir, uh, I, I am a very small person. No, sir, no, I just, you. sir, yeah, it, it is my good luck that I got the opportunity to uh, take a part in the discussion of such an important topic in the uh, MCH and DNV final examination, CA prostate localized as well as the steps of radical prostatectomy. All our presenters like Dr. Minal and Dr. Jatin has taken a wonderful job. They have taken time. They have made the good preparation, good presentation also. And we are really thankful to Gopal sir, um, Himatri sir, as well as Kunishko sir for their uh, presence and their valuable input. And by this, I am just going to conclude the session. Thank you for all. Thank you. For, Thank for you your presentation. Much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Bye. Thank Bye. you, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, students who are presented.